there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Today we have a really fun technique using some vellum and our alcohol markers. So this is something that I haven't tried before. It's not a new technique but it's new to me which is what I enjoy trying out on this channel. Now I had all these pieces here of vellum left over from another project and with all my spares and scraps I put them all back in the uh, packet and that means that at some point I will use these up. They're good for all sorts of things. But I use the Lawn Fawn Vellum. This is 36 pound vellum. So it's a little bit heavier weight. And I think that that works out well for this technique. So I decided to use these pieces today because they were all kind of sitting there. And it felt like it was just the right time. Now I'm using the Spectrum Noir Tri Blends. These have three colors in each barrel. Uh, you can use any alcohol markers for today's technique. They don't have to be these ones at all. And you don't really need the tri -blend ones. Uh, this is just what I have and this is all I have. Um, so I am just going to pick kind of a bluesy and greensy one. And all you do is just scribble color down on one side of your vellum. So as I said, the first one that I chose to do is kind of blues and tones of green, I guess. And so I am just making sure that there is not too much empty space. But it certainly doesn't have to be completely covered by any means. I was probably going to town a little bit on this one. I'm just enjoying adding all the different colors. And then to blend this um, piece here, this little panel, there are a few different things that you can use. But I am going to be using the blending solution today. This is just the alcohol blending solution that I use with my normal alcohol inks as well. You can use uh, isopropyl alcohol, 91% uh, probably. You can use um, lots of different things. But this is just what I'm using because this is what I have on hand. And for this technique, I just tip a little bit out onto an acrylic block. And then I use a paintbrush to gently kind of dab it all over. I find that if I put it straight onto the vellum, it kind of over soaks it and kind of the pattern gets too distorted for my liking. I prefer to kind of control it and pop it on with a paintbrush. If I need a little more, I add a little more. If I need a little less and you have a minute or so to just quickly dab it up with a paper towel, then I just pop them aside to dry. This one here, I am doing kind of uh, reds and peachy kind of colors. Um, as I said, you don't have to have the tri -blend markers for these at all. Any alcohol markers are going to work. And I'm sure that you could do this with just regular alcohol inks if that's what you have too. Uh, just give it a go. This creates a really fun, almost marbled look, which I was uh, trying it for today and really enjoying this process. Now, I assume that this probably doesn't have a very good effect on the paintbrush that you are using. None of my paintbrushes are super expensive. Mine are all pretty cheap and cheerful ones, so I wasn't too worried at all, but I would suggest probably not to use your best paintbrushes on this technique. I just washed mine out um, afterwards and it seemed fine. This was filmed a few weeks ago and I've used the paintbrush many times since, so it's all good. I don't have any in-depth knowledge of alcohol ink and alcohol markers and things. I really just dabble in them because it's part of card making and I enjoy the process of it. But uh, I definitely am not a whiz at this sort of thing. I just do the basics and the basics is what I kind of like and I can create with. Um, so I hope that you are enjoying this video. I hope that you are getting something out of it and you are able to give this a go at home with the items that you already have in your stash too. I do suggest that a heavier weight vellum is probably a good idea because... Uh, the lighter weight tends to curl. I found that this, um, although it curled up ever so slightly, I wouldn't say it curled up, the edges kind of came up. Um, they flattened beautifully as they dried and it was nothing at all. I've had paper do much, much worse. Um, so yeah, a little bit heavier weight vellum probably works well. And that Lawn Fawn vellum is the one that I use for everything in my crafting because it is absolutely the perfect weight. I can heat emboss it with it. And even here where I'm using my heat gun on it, it is going to be uh, really fine and not uh, crinkle up or anything because of course it's plastic. So we have to be careful about the heat that we add, but uh, the Lawn Fawn Vellum holds up to it really well. So these are the results. This one is actually still a little bit wet, but that's okay. Now I was thinking here when I was showing you that uh, I should probably pop a white piece of paper underneath just so that you can kind of see the marbled effect that you get. And I think the effect is a little stronger because we use the paintbrush rather than just putting the um, blending solution straight down onto the vellum. Now I have the Layering Robin bundle here. This is the Hero Arts one. This one comes with the stamp and die together. Uh, I love this set. This is my kind of easy peasy uh, layering. There's only a couple of steps. 
And as for the tree stump here, what I do, I have the Pinecone Versafine Clear Inks and I just stamp the kind of outline of the tree stump in full strength brown ink. And I don't have another brown uh, pigment ink or anything like that. So all I do is for the inside the filler, I stamp it off once, then I stamp in and use second generation stamping and that gives the perfect uh, slightly lighter shade to fill in those tree stumps. So really nice and easy, not complicated at all. Then there is the outline of the bird and I'm going to stamp this once in the morning mist color which is the just a gray pigment ink then once in the black one. Then for whatever reason my camera turned off I think I just hadn't noticed it had switched off filming so I stamped out the first layer of the bird in the cheerful ink just full strength. And both of them are done exactly the same, both the grey and the black. These have both the same inks on them. They just look different because one is in grey and one is in black. And then I was wondering if I should do a couple more. This is the Warm Breeze colour from the Versifying Clear range. And I love this colour. So I stamped out a couple more in black. And then I did one bird with second generation stamping and one with full strength. And then I chose yellow for their little bellies uh, to go on, just in that cheerful ink. So it was just fun. I find with this bird layering set, you can almost use any colors you wish at all. And it's going to look absolutely gorgeous. So uh, any colors kind of work, which I really, really love. Um, but anyway, I do, as I said, this is the matching set. So this has the dies in it. There's only two, one for the stump and one for the bird, which is perfect. Run those through my die cutting machine and they die cut beautifully. Then on to uh, kind of putting the card together. So I have the diamond droplets embossing folder from a Creative Expressions. And I kind of like this one because it has those sporadic kind of uh, diamonds. And I'm going to pop in my vellum piece to emboss it. Now you could definitely skip this step. I mean it adds a little bit of something to it but it doesn't add a whole lot. I didn't want it to kind of take over from the marbling that we did in the background, it was just meant to be subtle. Now to attach this to my project, I have a piece of silver mirror cardstock here and this also uh, is actually from my scrap bin so it already has the double-sided adhesive on the back of it, the scrapbook.com double-sided adhesive. So that makes it nice and easy when it comes to putting it down. But the trick when using vellum is to always have a plan as to how you are going to attach it to your project. Um, vellum is not tricky to work with, it's just something that you kind of need to bear in mind and have a plan about where you'll put adhesive. So for me, I use this trick quite often when I am adhering down a panel. Obviously these panels started this size so I knew it was going to be a strip kind of down the center of my card or to the left a little bit. So these ones have that I can just uh, peel off the stick paper, the release paper, and then these are adhesive, really strong adhesive that I adhere down to the top of the vellum. Then I can see how it's going to go on my card so all I need to do is put a little thin strip of double sided tape down the back of it and this will hold this onto my card perfectly. Even though I'm going to put more things on top of this, um, this would work absolutely fine for adhering your panel. Now the other option that I considered here, if I was going to pop down this panel and not want to use the uh, mirror cardstock, the silver cardstock, is I would add a um, adhesive, like a, an adhesive sheet, a double sided adhesive sheet to the entire backing of that piece of vellum. And that way you wouldn't be able to see it either because it's all over, so there'll be no difference as to where there is or is not vellum, it's just over the entire backing. And that way you could just adhere it down plainly to your card. But I like the silver strips for this one, it needed it and it gave it a little bit extra. So that was on the card front. I'm popping some foam down on the back there so it pops it up just a little bit from my card base. My card base is four and a quarter by five and a half inches and then my card front is four by five and a quarter inches. I have the little stump here. I just like to cut off the bottom of this so that it's nice and flat um, so that it kind of sits flush with the bottom of the card. And then this is where I was deciding which bird I wanted to use. I thought I was going to use the yellow one, but actually I fell in love with how subtle the little blue and yellow bird was, so I went with him. But let me know in the comment section down below which one you would have chosen. I think they both go absolutely fine. I think the uh, yellow one was just a little bit brighter, and for whatever reason I felt like going for this kind of more toned down version. So I popped the stump down nice and flat just with some liquid uh, glue, some Ranger multi-medium in the matte finish. And then this one I popped up with a little bit of foam tape, this gorgeous little bird. And then just to finish it off, I have got my happy birthday stamp set from Concord and Ninth. This is my favorite. And I am just going to 
uh, stamp this out with a little bit of VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. So it's the same black ink that I used for the to stamp out the outline of the bird. I'm going to stamp Happy Birthday and I actually ended up doing this a whole lot of times so that I can pop some of these aside because obviously I use Happy Birthday the most out of absolutely everything. I cut these out with my long bladed scissors and that way they are nice and straight and good to go but a trimmer or anything like that is going to work perfectly fine too and then I did decide to pop this one up on a little bit of foam tape as well and that way it kind of matched the height of the little birdie. Now I wanted this sentiment to be really nice and small because I definitely didn't want it to take over this kind of gorgeous card. I wanted that vellum to not get lost in the background because it was a really fun feature to create. But anyway, that was my card for today. I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope you end up giving this a go. And I will have links to all the products that I've used today down in the description box below this video. If you want to share your version of this, then come over and join our Facebook page called Come Crafting with Natasha. There is a link to that below as well. And other than that, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much. See you then. Bye.